Yo guys, I'm cleaning my lens, you know why? I got sparks on it. Today I'm gonna do something a little bit different. It's gonna be a how-to, only I'm not really doing the how-to. I've got somebody that's gonna do a how-to better than the how-to I could do <laughs> because it involves welding and I can make something stick to something, but it ain't pretty, and I want this to be pretty, so I got a professional to do this job. So, what is the job? Well, let me show you. Let me give you a good idea here. Okay, so what I discovered was I can get both Lucy's quad and Jude's motorcycle in the back of this. Maybe my motorcycle and the quad but what I have a problem with is getting all three in the back, which a lot of people do on an F-150 with a smaller bed on it. So I decided to use this guy. Now that's pretty awesome, except when you pull a trailer. Now the trailer's back here, so where do you put it? Well, what we're going to do today is we're going to weld a hitch on the back of my little camper here so that we can accommodate that little Joe Hauler. There's my shadow. So we can accommodate that little Joe Hauler. We're gonna figure out later where to relocate this uh, spare tire. Like I said before, my welding skills, I can make something stick, but it ain't gonna look good. So I got a professional here. This man's name is Anthony and he does welding. And uh, he's gonna tear it up today for us here. He's gonna do his uses. Miller, and we're gonna smoke it, right? Go blue! <laughs> As you see, we've set up the uh, convention center table. This is a mobile unit. I decided, why do you need to carry something big and heavy? We'll just bring a sheet of plywood, bash the shit out of it, throw it away later, and you get a $30 table from Walmart, Costco, anywhere. Fold it up, and if it goes to hell, it's 40 bucks, throw it away. Definitely need a lot of tools. So my dad bought yellow. I ended up buying yellow. 20 volt. Everything that I could get brushless I did because it saves time. It saves a uh, battery. And these things are wicked mean. We're gonna use some slick ass C-line top of the line uh, drills to make our four corners of the radius of our tube here because we want a real nice weld joint that will end up getting a beautiful, nice little weld. We don't need much, even though this is serious duty wall. What we have over on the hitch is pissant 16th, absolutely nothing. So we're not gonna need a big weld. What does that mean? We're gonna need a tight weld. We're gonna need a, uh, very small weld and if we have a gap it's gonna look like shit and people will know that someone with a hack did it so let's uh, get started so step one all right so we are starting with what getting pulling the spare off right got to get to where we can get to weld we're gonna do some metrology first we're gonna do all our uh, primary measurements we're going to tape things off and then we're going to start with uh, some drilling holes at the corners to make the preemptive radius. If we have to, we'll router or grind so that this tube fits absolutely better than factory finish so that when we weld, we can put the appropriate size weld for this thickness of material and when we're done and painted, It'll look like it was a perfect middle of the week Wednesday job and the guy had nothing to drink before he started welding. So, what do you have laid out here to do this job? As many CT American squared. tools as we can get. Channel locks, my favorite. Fiercely made in the United States. Empire, made in USA. Empire, made in USA. Trying to buy tools here because I believe in the craftsmanship. Keep that money in the American loop. Dad bought DeWalt, I bought DeWalt. 
after my own evaluation, I don't think there's any reason to buy anything else. So basically we're doing our measuring our metrology and doing a little bit of layout. We've measured this outside bumper, also the poop tube holder. They cut it within a 64th, so it's seven feet exactly. We marked our center line at three and a half with a little piece of blue tape to give us a permanent visual. This is not gonna bear too much weight. A 250 pound motorcycle is not gonna shift the tides in trailering. It also lines up. They put this thing on there, beautiful. I could almost draw up a plum from the bottom of this gold swoop and it hits within a quarter inch of this center line. These guys know how to make a trailer. Go Jayco. Our next step is get out our trusty Dewalt chop saw, cut a segment of this off for our tracing because we can do the math, but it's real easy to just trace. And then we're gonna use a little offset so that we can have some uh, fudge factor for this to line up through the back hole. And then it will butt up against our super, super thick cross member in the back where we're gonna do our second set of welding. So we'll get out the chop saw and that'll be the next step. We're gonna get out my chop saw. <laughs> now, the thing is, most guys would just weld the son of a gun on here. They just go like this. Tack weld it and then finish it up. Not this guy, we're gonna do it right. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut that piece of stock that we're using as a trailer hitch. What is that, two inch? It's actually a special, special tube made specifically for trailer hitches. Is it really? It is. They have it in its own section. It has a special paint and it doesn't get it commingled with anything else because they know that's for trailer hitch receivers. What we got here is a classic, scary, awesome DeWalt chop saw with an abrasive blade, but this is mostly for construction work. Now you'll see this is not a precision instrument per se. We can make it precise by using some precise metrology. Remember our little empire square? We're gonna take this, pull our lock all the way back, and actually scoot it up against here. Pull up our blade guard, roll this bad boy down, and gently, because this blade moves, gently kiss the end and push into the corner. Now I've already set this up so that we're gonna get a really nice 90 out of this. If we went with the metrics, the markers over here, no guarantee. But Empire spent a lot of time and money to make sure that this thing is square. Let's roll our fence in, throw our lock. These will translate, they'll move up and down. Again, not precise. This is for pretty good rough stuff. You get good at it, you take a couple test cuts, and you could get this thing bonkers. These things are loud as hell. Always earplugs. I don't care if you're an old guy or a young guy, you wanna make sure that you're hearing into your 80s and 90s. Unlike me. What now? I can't hear. <laughs> Too much rock and roll. They shoot shit tons of sparks. We're shooting these sparks towards the absolutely soaking wet green hillside. There are fires everywhere. If you don't have soaking wet hillside, you definitely wanna have a hose right next to you and spray down the area where you think these are gonna go because the last thing we need is our goddamn house burning down. Let's do it. Let's do it. Almost through. This is some serious thick wall. Let this thing rest for a tiny bit. We don't want to blow the breaker. And we also don't want to ram this thing down because we could get it to stall, pop a circuit, and you could cook this thing. And that's 150 bucks we don't want to have to spend again. We don't want to touch that right now. Let's go ahead and pick it up. No, that's probably <laughs> two or 300 degrees. We'll melt the glove right to my hands and then my fingers will melt to that and then I'll throw it in the bushes and catch the bushes on fire and it burnt my hand. That would be a no. <laughs> 
So guys, I'm using a different lens because you know what? I sacrificed that lens on that close up. So without further ado. So we've taken our little section and we've used blue tape. We like blue tape. Why? Well, we don't need Dicom. We don't need anything else. Blue tape, see it from a mile away. And if we don't like it, we take it off and throw it away. Now you don't have confusing lines. And we're gonna use this piece to go over here, line it up with our other section of blue tape and really see if this is what we want. And you say, all right. Are you going from the middle of the line, the left side, the right side? That's why most people use Dicom and a scribe because you get a tiny little scratch. Tape, we can get perfect lines that are absolutely, totally removable, and it's cheap, it's easy. And now we can say, do we like this? Do we really think that's the center? Do we trust that this wrought piece is actually dimensionally sound? And does it look right? I, mean, I drew a line here, ghostly. I'm going to draw lines around it so that I get the general shape. And then what we'll end up doing is start drilling some holes and then we'll get the uh, jigs out with the best Bosch blades that I could buy with the high tooth count and go super slow and cut out our outline in the first segment. This one needs to be amazing. The back side one doesn't need to be as accurate. And then the third side, we'll remove material here, get the paint off of it, get it beautiful, get it ready, and that'll be another portion where we weld some segments in as much as we can, can we can do as far as the limited space that we're allowed there. Beautiful, beautiful weld on the outside. It'll be structurally sound. It'll look like it came from the factory and nobody will know the difference. That some Yahoo came out with his uh, welding rig and put it all together. So guys, since I broke my lens, you're gonna see me go through a myriad of lenses here to, to, to do everything I need to do to get this vlog done. It wasn't bad, it's a $145 mistake. It's enough to sting, but not like when I broke my GH5 lens. Back over here at Tool Central, we're gonna have two phases to the next segment of this job. We're gonna need our fabulous American-made punch. We're gonna need our true and blue S-wing, all American stuff. When we buy American, we save the United States. Badass 135 split tip, uh, clee line drills, because we really want to make sure that this doesn't go nyah, 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 nyah. Oh, and now we've just ran across the bumper, screwed it all up, and we look like a total hoser on camera. Now, we've done a lot of taping. This is a sexy way to do it. Absolutely high visibility. And unlike scribing where you're scraping the shit out of this thing and waiting for stuff to dry and back and forth, you can get perfect, absolutely amazing corners if you need to, or, got your guts on you can take this fabulous radius and mark on that blue with any other color I just happen to have a fabulous green sharpie and now you can see wow look at that radius and guess what blue tape you can cut right through it you can drill right through it and you can do some trick shit and we'll get to that later when we start grinding the paint off you'll see how we use this tape to give us a nice square segment that we're gonna remove paint so that when we paint back over it, we'll have just one spot that looks really nice and patched up. If we can't get the spray paint to perfectly match up, at least it won't be grinding all willy nilly all over the place. It looks succinct because your brain really likes symmetry. So if we have a nice symmetrical repaint segment here, people will see those lines and it won't make them angry. They'll see it and say, ah, oh, we've done modifications but I'm totally fine with it because my brain just loves symmetry. It loves seeing that, uh, that golden rectangle. We're gonna be here maybe most of the day to make sure that when we cut metal, we cut once, we cut perfect, and we don't have any heartache about saying, oh man, Ricky, I'm sorry I fucked up and we got a big old open segment that we're gonna have to fill with ugly weld. We're not paying for that. We don't want to do that. And it takes time to redo something that you shouldn't have fucked up in the first place. Big important factor. So everything hinges on us measuring once, twice, three times, a hundred times. It doesn't matter. You can pull this tape off for six years. You could do this. As soon as you cut metal, you've committed. Welding is 99% doing all of this. And then I go, yeah, and it's done. We will literally 
have maybe a minute of footage of me making welding. And the whole day will be waiting, prepping, getting up to when I put some electricity through this bad boy. So we'll take a segment anywhere in here. Bam, get a little punch prick. So we're starting with the absolutely atypical eighth inch to start a pilot hole in this bad boy. You really wanna just turn it towards you so you can see down into the first flute because then you'll know that you've actually set your bit inside of your little punch prick. I'm gonna go nice and slow to start this thing off so we know we're not walking. And with good drills, everything should be a milling operation. So you don't need to go very fast. You don't wanna create a lot of heat. And a sharp, good drill, we're already halfway through and we've only spun this thing maybe five times. Not too much, we, don't, we want the tool to do a lot of the work. Boom, and we're through. Fabulous. Back with the bigger bit. Gonna start slow. And now you don't want as much pressure on this because it'll grab a lot of chip. Now, we've got a hole near the center. We can see that nice and neat. This is a little bit bigger than the bit on our jigsaw and we're gonna start making a little bit of radius cut in there and see how it works, how beautiful it can get it. Bevel into zero, we need this thing to cut straight. We've got the highest pitch tooth blade we can get. We're gonna run our pusher on maximum. We want this thing to blow all the crap out of the way. We're gonna just go nice and slow, set it in there and see what we can get this thing to do. Not as tight a radius as we would like. We definitely need to be able to get a 90 within an inch and a half. So we're going to then revert to drilling out corners here. We could use a hole saw, but that could get pretty messy. Um, I have a step drill bit that is meant for metal that is unbelievable. I mean, it was a $60 bit. Well, right. let's give it a try. Now, just so you know, this is the god of step drill bits. <laughs> Absolutely. We've got enough radius on this that we can make most of that corner in one shot. That's what I was thinking. Now, this you is something I thought about. You just have to figure out where that center is gonna be. How We're do gonna do, do the metrology from this corner to the where the center point of this diameter of a circle will be. We'll get the radius length We'll center punch it. We'll do a tiny eighth inch drill, again for a starter to get that started in there. And then we'll go low and slow and step it up until we see this guy start eating into that radius on the tape here. And we'll make it in each of the corners. And then we'll get in our little uh, jigsaw and we'll cut out the flats of this radii square. You know, it was funny you were talking about, you said, you know, people like to see symmetry. But I've always thought that, you know, when I, as a pinstriper, uh, that uh, the eye likes to see balance uh, more, it, because you can actually trick symmetry. But I think the idea of symmetry, I think, is what the eye likes to see, you know. But you can trick it. You can trick it, and the eye likes to see balance in, in that case, um, I've found. Do you agree? I absolutely agree. Now all we need is Leonardo to come over here and draw his little guy, and we'll be set. Imagine the kind of effort that goes into a gosh darn airplane. I say let's build one. I can't believe you didn't bring your CNC machine. I've, you know, it didn't fit in the H2. There it is. There's our four corners. Go to the four corners of the earth and preach the art of welding. <laughs> and hole making. <laughs> All right, there we go. Halfway through the green.
That's pretty. Right there, TV Land viewers. We've cooked the blade, which I knew we would do. We're gonna dislodge that bad boy. We're getting close. There it is. This is an unedited, absolutely fabulous. Ooh, we're gonna see if it's. God Ooh. damn, that was fabulous. That's like porno. Look <laughs> what did it do? We're gonna just let it sit in there, and we'll bring the camera back and see how nice it really looks. We did our job right. Very good. And I just brought out my little vacuum. You're gonna want one of these. Look at that crazy thing. I'm telling you, write the name down, go on eBay, or not eBay, but on the internet. Um, I forget where I got that, and you're, I'm telling you, you're gonna love it. I use it to, to cut Kaizen foam. That is really cool. Yeah, it's bad. Fast cap, long nose marker. The quick recap before the lunch break. We did a lot of measuring. We cut out with a uh, stepper drill, four holes and a quadrant, and then we jigsawed into the radius of those stepper drill holes. We were very excited because our tube fit in there just nicely. A little bit of gappage, but we're not doing this with uh, a CNC. I forgot it at home. I'm sorry, everybody. Next time we do something, that'll be here. We came into the next solution. All right, we well, need to drill that same hole back here. Turns out there is less than six inches of gap between poop tube bumper and actual structural cross member in the back. There's one jigsaw that'll fit in there but you're not gonna get anything good. It's gonna be terrible. So, turns out we had a handy dandy, handy plasma 125 from Aesop with a built-in air supply. Plug it, set it, forget it. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take our fabulous template that we've already got center lined and marked off and we're gonna put it in the back here, use our fast cap long nose, draw the uh, perimeter, and then we're gonna hit it, scrape it up a little bit and uh, try to go through the back with the plasma. And then from there, we're gonna grind paint, weld, and step back and enjoy. Fabulous. So I just have to tell this story about, I, I see him underneath here working. But one time when I had my uh, <clears throat> recording facility, a couple of us walked in and the guys were wiring the console for us and uh, we took off for a little while. Came back, guys in the same position underneath the console. And we had said hello earlier, he didn't say hi, and now he wasn't saying hello either. Still, I finally looked underneath there. The guy had zip-tied his arms up because the son of a bitch was so hungover. He had to sleep. <laughs> Needless to say, he didn't have a job. <laughs> Keeping this lens away from those sparks. Put some tape on here. Now we use that as a template. We get some relatively straight grinds. When we paint back over, 
won't be a big weird looking mess. We'll have some pretty crisp, not razor sharp, because we but didn't crispy use the enough. standard. We're gonna scribe the uh, marker, sorry, the inside of this tube with the outside diameter here, hopefully positioning it absolutely perfect. And then we'll plasma cut out the back side. And then we're ready to weld, baby. Beautiful. First try, baby. He cut the receiver and now we're uh, drilling for the uh, hitch pin. And this is what that looks like. We used a step bit actually and it gave sort of a polished and then not polished and then a polished little cool step bevel and you know this is uh, it receives it. All right, here it is. So big it came out the other side. So we're at weld prep. We're basically marked out some lines where we need to grind off this mill scale. Some buzzwords for you guys. Because it only takes a very, very minute amount of this to interrupt the interface between weld parent material and filler material and as well as our substrate. So how many molecules words. thick do you think this interface is? Only a couple. Where weld, trailer hitch, and trailer meet. A tiny bit of that is enough to disrupt that fusion. And we have a weld that we really don't have 100% of the strength that we should be having in here. So we grind this all off, get it to bare metal. You'll hear our welders say that bare metal, bare metal. Like this section right here that's beautiful and shiny and pristine. So we'll take this, go at it, and then we're ready for welding, baby. In case you haven't noticed, I'm keeping my distance from them sparks right about now. It even looks like I might have hit this with some sparks. Yeah, let me get my, my cleaner. There, how's that? Stripper's Tribe Candy Cane. So, which weld will you start with? The outside? I'm going to put a tack when I get this all lined up. So we're gonna set this here, say, okay, okay. Come back, take a visual, make sure it looks right. So we'll set this up, we'll angle it right, we'll get it indexed, we'll look at it, we'll give it a little bit of this to see, and then we'll tack it in place. And then we'll start welding it up and we'll be done. And you know what Minnesota Fat said? You know, one of the greatest pool players to ever live. So take all the easy shots and there won't be any hard ones left. That's what we're doing. A lot of people don't find the right heat when you're welding MIG. A lot of people go the wrong direction. They pull, they push in the wrong situations. It's actually a little harder than TIG welding to get the right settings because you're constantly adding filler material at a constant rate. Well, if you have the wrong parameters, you'll be overfilling most of the time or underfilling not most of the time and not have enough heat. So for me, I always go hot with MIG because you can always make a second pass and uh, to fill in any undercut. If you run your wire speed a little low and your voltage a little high, you can get to where you start teetering between uh, short circuit transfer, which is what you hear, pop, 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 and a spray transfer, which is a hissing, loud, funny sound. Sounds like it's wrong. Most of the time it is, but if you know what you're doing, you're effectively slowing down the rate of weld deposition 
in order to let more arc time exist. Well, that makes it a hotter, more fused weld, usually a little underfill. And you can get that great base put in and then add filler material over that. Cool, huh? Okay guys, so we're gonna go ahead and, uh, here we go, we're gonna put this thing on. Let's do it. Let you kind of guide it, I'll just back you up. I think it might be right there. Will it work? There it is. Pin fits. And it is tight. What do you think? Send it. All right. Time to see. I think it's there. I think so too. All right, guys, so there you have it. We were able to get it done. The only thing left to do is to just go and uh, do a little bit of paint uh, to keep it from rusting, match it up nice. I'm thinking about taking some all thread and going through that bumper just to stabilize it even more, although both of us were standing on it and it didn't go anywhere. But the back of a trailer just rocks and rolls so much that it just makes me a little nervous, you know what I mean? So if uh, if we had that there, it would be even better yet. So take rock. care of each other. And keep rock a lot. People like this channel, what are they supposed to do? Subscribe and leave a like down below and turn on the notifications so that you don't miss another video.